Hi everyone, with this tutorial I want to show you how to slice a procedural mesh. First of all we need to create the procedural mesh and then we will create a blade on the player to slice the mesh. So let's start with creating the procedural mesh. I create a new blueprint, so actor blueprint, slice mesh. I open the blueprint. Here I add a static mesh component and also a procedural mesh component. The procedural mesh is created by the static mesh and we can also replace the default scene root here. So, let's go in the construction script. Let's select both static mesh and procedural mesh. So what happens is that when you place this blueprint in the scene, the procedural mesh will be created based on what you set in the static mesh. If you put the copy procedural mesh from static mesh component, you will do this. You create a collision and that's it. You compile. You go back here on the static mesh. You need to be sure that this is no collision while the procedural mesh has to be block all. Then procedural mesh has to also has the simulate physics and static mesh has to be hidden because it will not appear in the game. Again, now we select a mesh for the static mesh. We can select what any kind of static mesh we want. We will um, look for a simple cube like this. Two things has to be checked before adding the static mesh. One is collision, so we see the cube has already the collision here. One is this, a low CPU accesses. So this has to be flagged like this. We save, we put the static mesh here. So now we have the, the, um, the cube and we compile. We can select uh, the material later on. Now I show you what happens if we put this here. I put this blueprint here so you can see the cube. I click play. You see, this is not simulating physics. If I press and I go in the error, it says it has complex and simple collision. So the procedural mesh has complex and simple collision. So we need to remove this. We go to procedural mesh. We check for complex. So use complex as simple collision. We remove this. Otherwise, the procedural mesh is not properly created by from the static mesh. Again. We click play and now we have our cube. So this cube is um, generated when we click play and uh, is the procedural mesh. The static mesh is no more here in the scene. It's hidden and we will not cut this. We will cut the procedural mesh. Now let's create a blade. So we go here on the blueprint, the even graph, and uh, let's create before the blade. So we go on the viewport. I add a plane, simple plane like this. I call it blade. So I want to add this plane here to the hand socket. So I, I put the blade in the hand, the left hand socket. So I need before to attach the blade to the mesh. Then I go here to parent socket. And if I click, I see all the list of my sockets and I click the hand. So now you see it is attached. Let me put to zero all these and also this, so now it's attached to the to the hand. You don't see the blade, the, um, the blade, yes, the pan, the pain, let's say, on the other side, because this material here is not two-sided. I um, just open the material, you can select two-sided here, and click apply. So you go back here, and now you see it's two-sided. The material I prefer to use in this case here, it's red. So this is my red material. So now let me just adjust a little bit the the blade here. Let me stop the sky. Let's adjust in order to do simple cuts. Adjust the rotation also. So it's forward the player like this. Let me see how it looks like like this. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Okay, let's use it like this. A bit lower, perhaps is better. Like this. So this is our blade. Now we go in the code part, and here what we want to do, we want to um, let the blade overlap. So sorry, we need to set the blade overlap all. So we want to let the blade overlap the procedural mesh, so the cube we have already set in the scene. And when it, it is overlapping with the left mouse button, we want to place the cut one or more cuts. So we do like this. I select the left mouse button. So when it's pressed, I want to uh, use a variable here. Can cut, which I was using before. Okay. So when it's pressed, I set the can cut to true. When I release, I set the can cut to false. Then what I do here is to um, select the blade, okay, and I want to do that when the blade is overlapping the um, procedural mesh and at the same time I'm pressing the left mouse button, I will perform an action, so which is the cut action. I do all this with this assign on component begin overlap. So, sorry, whatever. Okay, so I do this. I press the left mouse button, I'm overlapping uh, the, the procedural mesh, and what I do now here, I do once. I do the cut only one time. When I release the, the button, I reset this to once. This is because when I cut the procedural mesh, I want to cut only one time. If I uh, don't put this to once, I will cut uh, hundreds of times pressing the, the mouse button and the CPU will crash. So I use the do once. Here I again put the blade here. Here I, uh, sorry, I get the um, component, the procedural mesh component that I'm overlapping with the blade and I cast to procedural mesh component. I remove this here and I connect here. Okay, so I'm preparing the procedural mesh, which is overlapping the blade, to be sliced. What I do now, I get the mesh component and I slice, slice procedural mesh. So, to slice the procedural mesh, I need the plane position and a plane normal. Then I will enable uh, the creation of the other half of the procedural mesh, the new section for cap, and here I will select the material, a red material, which I selected before, this red material, which is my uh, material that is created inside the cut. So again, I get here the um, word, word location of the blade, and I connect it to the plane position. And for the plane normal, I just need the up vector. That's it. Then what I need to do here is to create uh, physics on the part that has been cut, so simulate physics, and I put this to true, and then finally I need to um, create a radial impulse, so the, the piece will fall a bit far away from the, 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 um, the location where I've been cutting the, the, the mesh. So I get the word location of the mesh, here you can put whatever you want, but I put the word location of the mesh a radius of impulse 300 and a strength of 500, and that's it. I compile here, and this is all what you need to do to create the procedural mesh slice. So, slice here. So let's see if it works here. I go back here on my viewport. So, um, let me see one thing on the Okay, this, okay. So I click play. Let me put this here. I want to see the code while I'm playing. Okay. Okay, I go over, I'm overlapping. What I do, I click and I slice. Click and slice. Click and slice. So I can slice any piece. Uh, the good thing of putting the code inside the player is that uh, you can slice the 
procedural, the original procedural mesh, and also the other part, so the this one, the other half procedural mesh, because this will be a new procedural mesh. So th this is much easier instead of putting uh, this part of code inside the mesh. I could have put also this inside here, but uh, it will not work in the same way. It will be um, less efficient. So like this, I can cut, and no matter if you cut the, um, the piece that has been cut or the original piece, it cuts everything, this. Another thing you can do uh, to improve this um, is to parameterize the procedural mesh. So you have seen that I didn't put a material at the beginning. I could have put a material, I didn't put, because I want to do it via parameters. So to select material, mesh, the scale, the rotation, everything via parameters. So I do like this, I create a select a static mesh, I set static mesh here, I do like this, and here I promote to variable. So this is my this is my mesh. Then I do the same for the material, set material, and also this I promote to variable. So I will call this material. And then finally I can also play on the scale. So set scale. Let's say set uh, transform. Or, uh, yeah, word scale, set word scale. I just need a scale here. And also this I promote to variable. That's it. So I connect this to my script here and uh, nothing else. What I need to do here, ah, okay, I select this like this, okay. So now you see that you have, in the, okay, we need to set these variables editable, one, two, and three. Then I go back to the viewport and now you see that I have these three parameters which I can use to to create, select any kind of mesh I want. So for example, I wanted to do the cube, I put the cube. I want um, a green material. Let's say I go to my starting content and I select the materials, the green material, for example this. And then I want to put the scale. So I want to put uh, two, 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 like this. I click play and this is my cube. So I can cut this how I want. Then if I want to put a new mesh, new procedural mesh, I just copy this. For example, I put this uh, uh, one, one, two. I change the material. I want a brick material here. And that's it. I can also change the geometry. So I can go in the architecture here. I want, for example, this wall window here. I just to be sure that this has a collision. So it hasn't got a collision. I put a collision here. And uh, um, I just to have to set the CPU access. So once it's done this, I can use it. So I can put this here like this. So you see, I can rotate. I move it here. I can play with the scale. For example, this is one. So I can put, for example, two this, two this. And uh, yeah, it should stay and click play. So now we can also slice this. See? So basically you can slice any kind of mesh you want. You can slice this, you can slice this. It's up to you. That's it. Nothing else. With these parameters you can change all the mesh you want and you need just to or to copy from uh, an already present mesh here or to place the blueprint inside and to start from scratch. That's it, I, how you do a simple uh, procedural mesh cut. If you want to do the Wolverine effect, uh, you need just here to add a second procedural mesh. So you just need to copy this here, to connect this here, and here to play with the location and up vector. So perhaps the location uh, will be something uh, like uh, this. You need to add, for example, uh, uh, 50, 
and then place it here the up vector is the same and so you have two cut at the same time 